Hi, this is Prepare for Tomorrow, and I am Katie Jimenez, along with my husband Manny Jimenez, and together we are KMJ Ministries. So we're very glad to have you here with us today. <laughs> um, the uh, purpose of our ministry is to uh, prepare people for the coming of the Lord by teaching and healing and elevating them to their place in the kingdom of God. And we've been doing a YouTube series on the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Yay. Oh, and you had one thing you wanted to say before we really got going. What did you want to say? Believe what? <laughs> Happy Mother's Day oh. to all the mothers out there. <laughs> one Happy <thing>. Mother's Day. <laughs> he is not an actor. I'm the actress. Okay. <laughs> So our fruit of the spirit is based on the verse in Galatians. I just uh, have the joy. That's yes, funny. you have the joy. The verse, chapter five, verse twenty-two. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And we've already gone through love, joy, peace, and patience. So today we are on kindness, just kindness. Um, I looked up in my strongest NIV concordance, which we have shown in back a back episode, if you want to go look, um, the definition of kindness, and it's the Hebrew word hesed, which I was a little surprised at because I know that word is often translated mercy. I was just surprised that was also used for kindness. But that means um, unfailing love devotion, often based on a covenant relationship, which is, of course, what we have with God, and mercy. And one of the examples I wanted to use for that comes out of the book of Hosea, and I happen to read out of the New International Version. And this is Hosea chapter 11, verse 4. Um, God is speaking about Israel. He says, I led them with the cords of of human kindness, with ties of love. To them I was like one who lifts a little child to the cheek, and I bent down to feed them. So God was treating Israel with kindness, and he treats all of us with kindness, with that unfailing love and with devotion. And of course, we do have a covenant relationship with him. And that's what he, we often see from God to Israel or, or to us over and over again. He was kind. He would be helpful. He wanted to um, treat them with gentleness and with love, you know, ties of love and with mercy. So, right? Right. Okay, now Manny right. has some wisdom for us. In the Greek. In the Greek. In the New Testament. In Galatians. Colossians. Colossians. Yes, with a C. I say, there's no C in there. Colossians. Colossians. <laughs> Colossians 3, 12 uh, is uh, the word kindness. Now, the definition on this word uh, in the Greek is Chris, Chris, that's Oh, yeah. No, this was weird. It's uh, I had no, Christotes. Christotes. It's like post toasties. <laughs> but uh, it, it's all great to me. You know? Which means to show kindness or to be friendly to others. In the Greek history, it often did, the ones that were kind to people were rulers, governors, and other uh, positions in leadership and authority. And they're the ones who were kind, mild, and benevolent to their subjects. Anyone who demonstrated this kind of quality was considered to be compassionate, considerate, sym sympathetic, humane, kind, and gentle. As well in the scripture, the Apostle Paul used this word to depict God's incomprehensible kindness for people who are unsaved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and go ahead and read that um, that actual verse. Did you have it marked so you could read the verse of Colossians? Or did, what? Oh, yeah, no. Well, yeah. Colossians. Yeah. Colossians three twelve. In your. Oh, you've got it there. Let's see. 
Paul described, oh, oh, right here. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. So, kindness, the elect of God, we have to put on kindness is mm -hmm. one of the things. And, um, and, and you see, in all these uh, works, all this works together. They're not individual. Right. That, they all work together. As the fruit of the Spirit, really. Yes. They all do. And I just want to mention again, he's reading this out of Rick Renner's Sparkling Gems, because we do want to give credit where credit is due to Rick. Um, I know right now, um, <laughs> as we tape this, we are in the still kind of on the ends of dealing with the coronavirus around the world. And um, we're always asking people just to be kind to each other, just to be aware, just to do things. And of course, if you've watched any of the earlier episodes, you know, there periodically just happens to be a song to match what we're going through. Were you going to sing? One and the two. <laughs> Go. I actually know two songs. She knows a lot of songs. <laughs> two songs that are both called Try a Little Kindness. Now, when the first time I thought about this one, which is one I learned from back in the 70s, and it's more of a Christian song. And it goes, try a little kindness wherever you go. Don't be afraid to let the tenderness show. Share it with your neighbor, see how kindness appeals. You'll be amazed at how good it feels. Anyway, it kind of goes along with that. Um, <laughs> but then I remembered later that there was also kind of a popular song uh, that went with that. And it was, uh, now let's see if I can think of it now that I've sung the other one. Uh, no, I can't remember it because it's the, the Christian one. No, that was the Christian one. Try a little kindness and reap a lot of happiness. No, that's the Christian one. Well, you'll probably think of it because there was a there was another popular song that was "Try a Little Kindness." Yes. So, in other words, they both came out around the same time, but it was important. Things were happening in the world. I think they both came out in the seventies. But kindness is something that doesn't go away. And really, as a Christian, we have to be careful because um, Christians aren't always the kindest people. You know, I have noticed that. And if you're going to be showing the love of Jesus, you need to be kind. You remember in the scriptures that the, uh, it says that the letter kills? And uh, to yeah, me, is it that, the, that the, yeah, the letter of the law, that if you don't have kindness, love, joy, all the fruits of the Spirit, uh, it's uh, really, you're, you don't have God's love in you. Uh, you're only basing it on uh, words. And, and people have a tendency to use words mm -hmm. to punish people or to uh, admonish or, you know, uh, in different ways. But uh, God wants you to be kind to one another but not only to Christians, but also to unbelievers. You know, uh, we are here as representatives of Jesus Christ. And so, he was, as you look at the New Testament, he was kind to people. Even when he was disciplined, uh, uh, the people or the disciples, uh, he was doing it in, in the act of kindness. Mm -hmm. Because he wanted to make sure that they knew what they're going to be doing when he was gone, uh, gone to heaven. Well, it's like the woman um, that was caught in adultery. I, it's very interesting to me that they always say, the woman caught in adultery. It's kind of hard to have adultery without two people. So they don't ever say anything about the man. He ran fast. <laughs> yeah, he must have run because all they brought out was a woman. And Jesus had, and they did, according to the law, had every right to condemn her and stone her. That was in their law. But Jesus wanted to forgive. And forgiveness quite often goes along with kindness. Mm -hmm. He was kind to her. He said, I'm not going to condemn you. I'm going to show you forgiveness and the kindness mm -hmm. to just let you go. But go and sin no more. 
And that one with kindness, he probably also mixed compassion and mercy. Yes. Well, that kind of, it still goes along with that, mm -hmm. uh, the covenant relationship, the mercy. Another thing that uh, is noted here that the scholar uh, has noted that when the word uh, kindness is applied to uh, inner human relationships, it conveys the idea of being adaptable to others. Oh, wow. Kind of like what Paul says, I become all things yeah. to all men. If you're in Roman, uh, Rome, you be what Romans do. Well, but of course, we're saying do what they do without violating the law <laughs> of God. But, yeah. but still, um, it, it's kind to of people to adopt yeah. some of their customs and be um, aware uh, of that. Uh, there's nothing wrong mm -hmm. with that. Like I said, as long as it doesn't violate anything in the Bible, just courtesy. Mm -hmm. We talk about this common courtesy. Be courteous to people. That Christians mm -hmm. need to be the number one uh, sh showers mm -hmm. yeah. of courtesy and kindness. So uh, uh, also it says that the believers need to strive to become adaptable to the needs of those around them. Rather than harshly requiring everyone to adapt to his own needs and desires. So, this it means that uh, contrary to the flesh where it says, excuse me, but if you don't like me the way I am, that's tough. <laughs> this is the way I am, and if you don't like it, you can get out of here. I'm not changing for anyone. That is not good for a Christian to, to have this attitude. Well, and I just... I remembered at least part of the chorus of that other verse. It, <laughs> and if you try a little kindness, then you'll overlook the blindness of the narrow-minded people on the narrow-minded street. Yeah. Yay! I remembered the other part. But that, that just shows that narrow-minded people. There's one thing to stick with God's Word, and then there's another thing to be nice. Mm -hmm. And Jesus was always nice. Mm -hmm. So, when the Holy Spirit produces kindness in you, something happens. Your entire mode of thinking will change. You'll be, begin to ask people, how can I be different for you? Ooh. Is there any way I can change that will help you? Is there anything I can do for you? How can I serve you to meet your needs more effectively? You know, that's interesting because I'm just, again, thinking of our current situation and a lot of companies, because there were needs met, um, I noticed that they would change what they have to do in their manufacturing process to make what they call personal protective equipment. Like a lot of people changed to making masks or making some kind mm -hmm. of uh, protective equipment for the medical personnel because they wanted to help. And mm -hmm. a kind person wants to help. People are out helping their neighbors. They're, they're checking on elderly neighbors. They're delivering food. Um, they're just doing all kinds of things. Well, right? uh, all across the country, uh, this nation, you see uh, reports on news of people being kind or generous to people all, all over the country, but not here only, but in the world as, as, as well. And so uh, sometimes when there is a, you might say, a disaster or something really bad occurring, you see the best of people. You know, the people that mm -hmm. uh, when a tornado hits or a hurricane, you see a lot of people coming to help because they want to, yeah. not because they have to. And you see it around. So when you become adaptable to meet the needs of other people, a supernatural work of God takes place in your heart and you will grow substantially in your spiritual walk as a result. Ooh. Kindness makes you more mature. Oh, yes. It, it shows. Well, that's what all these fruit of the Spirit, the more you, <clears throat> excuse me, the more that you are perfected and you are mature in your growth, your spiritual growth as a Christian, you're going to show more of these fruit of the Spirit consistently. People can do it here and there, but mm -hmm. consistently that'll show that well, you are getting there. Yeah, and, uh, and the, the thing that uh, with the fruit of the Spirit, uh, all the different part, uh, components of the fruit, fruit of the Spirit are working hand in hand. Uh, it, it depends on when the, what the situation is. One of those pop up more, but the other ones are still there. So it's a package deal, the Yay. fruit of the Spirit. 
and uh, uh, whatever needs to be used, God uh, or to the Holy Spirit will bring it out to you to be to deal with something with a person or a situation that would be more uh, the most effective way and loving and caring to deal with you know uh, certain maybe pretty hard situations that uh, uh, sometimes you don't know how to handle it, but the Holy Spirit knows and He can pick one of those fruit of the Spirit and you can turn people around or give them the right word, just the right word that will just joy and love will fall upon that individual. You know, I want to maybe close with one uh, illustration I heard of another pastor say was, and this it shows generosity with kindness, although generosity isn't listed as a fruit of the Spirit. It kind of comes through as kindness. He um, went to a restaurant. Okay, well, no, I'm excuse me, I'm trying to think. He went to an airport. He, he went to a restaurant and did some kind things too, but he went to an airport and there was a gentleman in there cleaning and he was, while people were there, then he was kind of standing off to the side. And mostly airports, that, that's not where you tip people. I mean, they're just there. They're employees of the airport. But the Holy Spirit moved upon this pastor to give a generous tip to the guy who was cleaning. And the pastor said, you know, I know people probably just overlook you and don't see you, but I want to tell you that you have an important job and I appreciate it. It is really great that you keep these restrooms clean because that is important. And he gave them the tip and he said the guy had been kind of just leaning, hunched over on his mop. And he at first he just stared. He didn't know what to say. And then he kind of straightened up. It's like, yeah, I have an important job, you know, and said, thank you. But that kindness, that generosity that flows out of the Spirit of God to reach people, just little things like that can touch them and make such a big difference in their lives. Especially when, uh, you know, uh, people that uh, you don't see them doing work like a janitor, you know, that uh, mostly they uh, are cleaning when there's hardly anybody mm -hmm. in the building or, or a situation. or somebody uh, delivering uh, a food or flowers to somebody that, uh, uh, that they're thankless that in, in their mind they're flat, thankless jobs but uh, God knows that they're not uh, uh, in, uh, they're not they they are important jobs and he sees they're it they're essential and he, they're essential and they're you know they, uh, Without them, even the even the most uh, 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 mundane job, if that person wasn't there, your life in that area or situation might be completely different. Yeah. You might have to wash the toilets in your office yourself. Yes. So just remember to be kind to people, that kindness is one of the fruit of the Spirit and that it helps show Jesus to the world. So that is all we have for this uh, particular program. But um, again, Happy Mother's Day. I already said Happy Mother's Day to my mom and my kids said Happy Mother's Day to me. But we just want you to, uh, we want to leave you with this parting thought that Jesus is coming soon. Are you prepared?